Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I should say good morning. I can't, actually, I can't even do an Australian accent, so that was pretty rubbish, wasn't it? Anyway, in Australian, good morning. Good job. <laughs> good day. Good day. That's what I should say. Welcome to everyone who's at home. Lovely to see you through that little screen. And I have, as you can guess, just returned from Australia, literally on Friday. So if I talk rubbish, please forgive me. Uh, <laughs> um, and now my leg is now better. So no more crutches and all is well. So that's really, really, really good. So this morning, we are finishing our series on the fruits of the spirit. Nine months we have been talking about the fruits of the spirit. And I've got a little quiz here. Ooh, some of you will have all of these things that we've given out. Some of you won't have been to all the services, obviously, but I happen to have got all of them. So what fruit of the spirit was that? Yeah. Love. I'm not going to do these in order, because otherwise you'll know. <laughs> what fruit of the spirit was the piece of string with the knot? Patience. Some say patience. Patience. Over there, that was patience. And then we had a dove. What fruit of the spirit is the dove? Peace. Excellent. And then we had a, a piece of gold, something that we could give away, that we could be generous. We could be generous with our goodness and generosity. And we had a really, really smiley face here, which was the fruit of the spirit, which is joy. Joy, we had lots of joy in that service. And then we had on Remembrance Sunday, we had a poppy to remember us of, to remind us of kindness, the kindness that people gave to each other in the really dark, difficult times. There was a lot of kindness. And then last time, we had a white feather. Please, me imagine it's a coloured feather, because I was reminded afterwards that white feathers mean something else, but obviously I'm too young to remember that. So, imagine it's coloured. What was the feather to remind us of? <coughs> gentleness. Heather talked to us about gentleness. And the very last one, we were given a little cross to remind us that. No, good guess though. You're nearly there well, actually with that. It was faithfulness. The faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of Jesus to us. So we will have, obviously, something today, but Heather will talk to you about that later. So, could I have my next slide, please, Bethany? What do all these objects have in common? Just shout out. Very good. Obviously, young and sweet, whizzy. They're remote controls. They all have remote controls. They absolutely do. Can you show the next slide, Bethany? Please. Oh, no, not the next one then. Sorry, it was the one back. To use them, you need a remote control. So, do we have a remote control in our lives? Do we have free will? We do have free will in our lives. And our remote control, we don't have remote control. We sometimes eat the wrong food. We sometimes lose our self-control, which is our fruit of the spirit today. I don't know about you, but I am not very good when it comes to chocolate. Um, and I do have to really, really control myself. But some things, I'm really good at self-control. Like I do not eat liver and kidney and all that stuff. So my self-control <laughs> over my food that I don't like is very strong. It's very poor over the food that I do like. Again, with our behavior, sometimes our self-control, when we're being not very thoughtful and rather nasty to our friends at school or at work or wherever we are, we can lose our self-control. We can say unkind words, we can say thoughtless words, we can be rather nasty. But when we have our self-control and we're thinking about, oh, actually, I'm going to be really kind to that person today, or I'm going to say something encouraging, then that's a much better way. But Heather will talk to us about our source of our self-control. It's not just us at all. And the fruit of the Spirit, as we know, we've been growing through our relationship with Jesus. 
Let's say a prayer before we start the service. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come in your presence. We thank you for your teaching from the Bible, from your inspiration, from all that we've learned about the fruits of the Spirit over these last few months. Help us to grow in them, help us to grow so that we can share your love in the world around us. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to have our opening prayer, if you'd like to stand. We say together, Heavenly Father, help us to sing your praise, confess our sins, hear your word, and bring you our prayers. Lord Jesus, help us to know you more, to understand your teaching, and to live and love as you did. Holy Spirit, refresh our minds, renew our hearts, and revive our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing our first song of praise to God. sentence before we move on to the next part of our service. It's in the prayer that you've all been given, which you were given as we started this series, but I'm sure if you're anything like me, you've probably lost your piece of paper. But it's a great prayer to remind us of all the different fruits of the Spirit. So at the bottom, it says self-control. Father, please grow in me self-control and discipline. Help me not to be indulgent in any area of my life. Let's think about those times as we come to say sorry, the times when we have been perhaps rather indulgent in the way we've treated people, the way we've said things, the way we've hurt people. Maybe we've not been as self-controlled as we should be. Let's just take a moment to think if you've upset anybody this week, intentionally or unintentionally, if you've said something, if you've thought something, Let's think about what we can offer to God so that we can be then cleansed and made new. Let's be still for a moment.
Let's say our prayer of confession together. We confess the wrong things we have done, the wrong things we have said, the wrong in our hearts. Please forgive us and help us to live as you want us to. Amen. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What a relief that we can hand all those things over to God, that we can now stand as we say our creed, what we believe in with confidence and sureness. Let's stand to declare our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us through power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. Epiphanies, chapter 5, verses <coughs> 6 to 10, 15, and 17. Let no one decide, deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes to those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them, for, for you were once darkness, but now you are, are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, Rightness, righteousness, righteousness and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. morning. Self-control. Sometimes I have lots of it, sometimes I have none. That's all. I think we could all feel the same. Now there are many things in our lives that we cannot control. Lots and lots of things. Who can think of something that we cannot control? The weather. I knew that would be first. We can't control the weather though, can we? We can hope and pray that the weather will be good when we want it to be good. We were talking about a wedding last night in our house and saying we really hope and pray that the weather will be good. But we can't control it. It will be what it will be. What else can't we control? The future. No, we cannot control the future. Amelia. Other people. Other, we cannot control other people, can we? We cannot, we can control how we react to other people, but we cannot actually control other people. Bethany? School. School. Don't go to school. School? <laughs> then you can't control school. But, but we walked into school too, and look, we survived it. <laughs> and still we're smiling. So keep going, perseverance. <laughs> there are things that we can control. We can control certain things about ourselves. We do have things that we can control, which is called self-control, the um, fruit of the spirit that we're talking about today. So if someone is unkind to us, 
We don't have to be unkind to them. We can't control that they've been unkind to us, but we've got self-control to not be unkind to them. Or if somebody wants to argue, we can not argue with them. We can choose, it's self-control. It's not just about willpower, that's involved. Obviously when there's chocolate and things like that, <laughs> oh, then it's willpower, but it's about making good choices about how we behave and what we do. We often talk as Christians as living with the light of Christ in us or walking in the light, of being the light in our communities, which is, was uh, referred to in our, our reading from Ephesians this morning. This says, the light of Christ is the divine energy, power, or influence that proceeds from God through Christ and gives light and light, life and light to all things. That could be difficult to understand, but it means that the light of Christ can influence us if the light of Christ is in us. We reflect the light by loving and caring for those around us, by sharing Jesus in our communities, by serving those in need, by being kind. It can mean that we do the right thing. We heard the word righteous in our reading as well. So some examples. You're in a shop, you see a five pound note on the floor, obviously somebody has dropped, and you remember somebody in your past saying, finders keepers, losers, weepers, what do you do? Do you? Give us some examples. Do you leave it there? Some would say that might be the safest thing to do. Leave it there. Do you put it in your pocket? Do you take it to customer services? Or do you ask around going, anyone lost this, anyone lost this, no good, and put it in your pocket? What do we think? <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. Is he? Oh, obviously, he's fine. Just let, let him carry on. As long as he's safe. I think we've got enough eyes on him. <laughs> no self control. <laughs> so, come on, five pound notes on the floor. What are we doing with it? Cast to us. Oh, you're good. You're good. Anybody ever just picked it up and put it in their pocket? No one's going to admit to that, are they? <laughs> Self control. Okay. Our younger people, we have some here today. You've cooked popcorn in the microwave, you've burnt it. There's a horrible smell in the house and you've messed up a pan as well. Oh, this looks like this might have actually happened. <laughs> you have a friend with you who was doing it and that friend has gone now. So when mum comes back, do you say that your friend burnt the popcorn? And that's fine, nothing will happen. You tell the truth. Do you say that it was somebody completely different who wasn't even there? Or do you say, oh, actually, I think it was what you cooked the other day that caused the burning smell? What do we do? We only have to tell the truth. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Self control. Well done. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, who's got a dog? Who's got a dog? No, 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 no children. Okay. So you've got a dog, everybody. And you've been asked to take the dog for a walk. But something comes on the telly that you really want to see. And if you take the dog for the walk, then you're going to miss the telly. So you don't take the dog for a walk because the dog can't talk. The dog isn't going to say anything. And so, what do you think? Okay. What do you think you're going to do? Are you going to just 
let the dog out the back door maybe. Are you going to wait until your show is over and not take the dog for a walk until then? Are you going to just put the dog in the crate and, you know, he doesn't really need to go? Or are you going to do your best to distract the dog and give him treats so it doesn't look like he needs to go for a walk? You're going to take the dog quickly and hope that you don't miss too much of the show. Are you going to wait until it's over and hope that maybe um, mum isn't home, even though she might come home and go, have you taken the dog for a walk? What are you going to do, Bethany? Yes, it's right. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit with that. It? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Often it's good when we're thinking of these sorts of scenarios to ask ourselves what would Jesus do? Jesus was here, what would Jesus do in this situation? Um, and it's more likely then that we would do the thing that would please him. Someday we are all going to be face to face with Jesus and it will be the most wonderful thing if he was able to say well done good and faithful servants. Our reading today tells us not to be fooled by people, not to be led by others, to make our own choices, to make good choices. Sometimes we can be led by others to do something that we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> We're not being led by you. <laughs> In our reading today, it tells us that as Christians we are the light. It tells us to do things that please this God. It warns us to be careful as to how we live. It warns us not to live as the unwise live. And it tells us to use every chance that we have to do good, to do the right thing. Once again, the perfect example of fruit, self-control, is found in Jesus. He is the one person who had perfect self-control his entire life. The Bible calls Jesus the one who had no sin, which means he didn't sin at all. Think about the kind of self-control he never thought. Just this one time I could lie to my parents or no one will know if I punch my brother. We don't read anything like that about Jesus. And we might think, well, Jesus led a very different life to us. Well, he did. It was in a different time. But he also had brothers. And um, I think he probably would have had the same problems that any of us who have had siblings have. But sometimes we could quite easily strangle them. <laughs> and I mean that in a very kind way. <laughs> I have four brothers. So yeah, I have four brothers. <laughs> And uh, yes, my, my niece is here today, today. Emma, is there one particular brother that I, all of us could actually... I, I can think of one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in, to sin in every way that we are tempted, which means his brothers and sisters probably bugged him as well. But he never sinned. He wasn't mean to them. He didn't hit them. He never stole their chocolate. He didn't think bad thoughts of them had the most amazing and perfect self-control. Jesus not only had self-control to keep himself from doing wrong things, he had so much self-control, he was always able to do the right thing. Sometimes that's the difficult bit. We remember that we shouldn't be doing one thing, but we then need the self-control to actually do the right thing. And that's where it gets a bit more difficult. We think of the story that we will hear in not too many weeks time of Jesus being arrested and taken to the cross at Easter. 
before he was arrested, he was praying to his father and he was saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering from me, but do what you want, not what I want. Jesus knew that he was going to have to go through this terrible suffering when he was arrested and he was going to have to hang on the cross. But by his incredible self-control, he chose to obey God rather than doing what he wanted to do. He, he'd already shown he had all the power to stop what was going to happen on the cross. He'd already cured people, fed thousands, raised people from the dead. He had the power, but he had the self-control to do what he knew had to happen. There was a plan, and he knew that had to happen. He always had the same self-control to keep himself from sinning and to obey God. Why did he have this self-control? Because he was full of the Holy Spirit. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit comes from the Holy Spirit. We're about to go off later today for our um, Alpha Away Day where we are going to be focusing on the Holy Spirit. And it is a difficult thing to understand for many people, but it is also a wonderful thing because we are given these fruits from the Holy Spirit. The term self-control is a tricky phrase because it is self, self-control. No one else is doing it for us. We don't have a remote control. Rosie said earlier, but that doesn't mean we're on our own. We have the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit lives inside of each of us. He is the one who gives us the power for our self-control. When we believe in Jesus, God's Spirit fills us. We can have self-control just like Jesus did when we depend on the Spirit to guide us can't control other people, but we can control our behaviour and how we react. Now, some of you will have seen these bracelets in the, certainly in the 80s and 90s, with WWJD. Anyone? What would Jesus do? I had one when I was a teenager, um, and they were um, very, very popular. They're beginning to be popular again. Um, and it, to wear it, either or have it on a key ring or have it on your wrist, when you are making difficult choices about things, and you need self-control, or indeed any of the fruit of the Spirit, to remind yourself and think, well, what would Jesus do? It can be wonderful to have that ahead of everything that you think of. What would Jesus do? So we have some bracelets. This is your last token to take away from our Fruit of the Spirit series. So please do not go home without one. Take a bracelet. You don't want to wear it. You can easily put it onto a key ring so that it's with you. We've talked about these Fruits of the Spirit. The Bible tells, Bible tells us that there are even more. Don't ever think that you have to grow this fruit on your own. In fact, you, can, you can't grow it on your own. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If anyone remains joined to me and I to him, he will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. So in everything we do, what would Jesus do? Grace, what are we doing? We're singing. We are. We're singing as the deer pants for the water. So as we long to move into that relationship through the Holy Spirit with Jesus, let's stand and worship him. <coughs>
about praying. Control. The self-control to pause before acting unkindly, to resist before delving in the biscuit tin, to stop and think how others are feeling. Uh, the self-control to not jump to the wrong conclusion. To take a moment before applying angrily to that text, to resist before delving in the biscuit tin again. To resist before delving. Oh, it's empty. <laughs> very short video which wraps up all the fruits of the spirit 
and I think you'll find it, hope you'll find it very moving and you'll remember it when you take your prayer away afterwards. Thank you, Becca. The fruit of the Spirit is The fruit of the Spirit is joy. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. about those fruits you might want to look at the list on the prayer that I gave you you might just want to think about what Heather has been talking about this morning let's just take a moment to see how we can grow in those fruits through the Holy Spirit and let's just open our hands and invite the Holy Spirit to help us grow in love and in these fruits Let's read the prayer together, starting with you. Love, Father, please grow in me a deep love for you and a selfless love for my family and for those I meet each day. Joy, Father, please grow in me a joyful spirit so that I can rejoice and give praise at all times. Peace. Father, please fill me with your perfect peace that passes understanding and which guards my heart and mind. Grow in me the ability to trust you rather than to worry and fret. Patience. Father, please grow in me the grace to be patient and to wait on you. Help me to endure hardships calmly and without complaining. Kindness. Father, please grow in me a generous and compassionate attitude that is always looking to help others. Goodness. Father, please grow in me integrity and uprightness that I might glorify you. Faithfulness. Father, Please grow in me the faith grace to be faithful to you and not to doubt your love and turn away. Please also grow in me the grace to be faithful in all my other relationships. Gentleness. Father, please grow in me a gentle and gracious attitude towards others. Self-control. Father, please grow in me self-control and discipline. Help me not to be indulgent in any area of my life. Amen.
Let's stand to sing our final.
Say together. May we find peace. May we find hope. May we find joy this day. May we find love. May we find rest here, in this place together, and as we go our separate ways. Amen. So, you're going to take one of these away, but please don't forget. And we don't have to have one of these on our wrist or on our key ring to help us think about every situation. What would Jesus do right now? We can still remember WWJD. What would Jesus do? Now, I would love you all to come for coffee, and I suspect there's some sort of sweet treat in there as well. I'm looking, there's probably at least biscuits. Um, and I don't think God would mind if we have less self, self control with eating chocolate and biscuits. I think that would be okay. What he really wants us to have self control and all of the fruits of the Spirit for is how we live our lives, how we treat one another. So an extra chocolate or biscuit would not be a problem. Um, next week, you probably all know, is Mothering Sunday, and we will have a service here. It will be a communion service, but it is very much geared for children. There will be activities um, and talk. Where we'll, we'll have sort of children's talk and a bit more of a grown-up talk as well. So please do come. If you know, if you have any children, neighbours, family, friends, and please encourage them to come along next week, 9.30 here. Um, and there are some flyers floating about if you want to fly, but it is on the notice sheet. Please do take a notice sheet home and have a look at that. I think that's all, unless anyone has any other notices that I can Yes, Sunday at 6 this evening. If you've never come to Sunday at 6 before, come tonight. And if you have come before, still come tonight. Um, we're going to have our Alpha Day uh, away day today. We're not going very far, but we are going away from here. And then we're going to come here and celebrate Alpha and, and the Holy Spirit. So we'll be singing. It's very informal. We start around quarter to six where there will be tea and coffee in here and cake. And then we start about six. And it's normally less than an hour, um, certainly no more than an hour. Um, so please do come this evening and join us at Sunday, at Sunday at 6. I think that's all for today. Um, but yes, go well, and we will see you again soon. Go that way, in fact. But please take one of these. Um, I'll put these by the, uh, by the door. Thank you.